my shirt and started hammering my chest and I, I wasn't moving I was just like a punching bag at that stage um, so a little while after that the ambulance eventually turned up and they put a mask on me put the tubes in my nose and tried to resuscitate me again and I still wasn't coming back so that, that's when they gave me an injection of Narcan and then from there I just remember taking the longest gasp of air that I've ever taken. It was like a... <sighs> it's just this big breath and I was freezing cold and my whole body was oh. jolting. Like I couldn't stop shaking. Oh. And um, they asked me, do you want to come to hospital? And I said, yeah, I think I should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah... That was the physical side of it. I didn't really... It felt like I was going to sleep. Mm -hmm. I could hear my friends in the background saying, come on, get up, stop. And then I was just drifting out. And mm -hmm. then it was actually probably a month or two after it that the all the experience of it was relived and came back to me in this kind of download dream kind of thing. And that just kind of gave me shivers when I had that um, just like memory of of where I went yeah where your consciousness went yeah yeah, yeah. Um, because I was confused at, at the start I was really confused and I didn't want to believe that nah that didn't happen to me mm. maybe I didn't fully die maybe I was just unconscious for a bit or you know just trying to justify what what it was um and i'd never encountered anybody that's had a near death experience to me it was people that i just didn't hang out with that i probably would have judged as being weird or something um and then i'm i've i'm always been like i'll believe it when i see it and then it was scary because I saw it, but I still didn't want to believe it. Oh, let me turn this off. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, so, yeah, it was really surreal to have had that experience, but almost be in denial about it and wander around aimlessly, just like, what am I doing back here then? If I'm supposed to be dead, aren't I yeah. supposed to be dead? Or maybe I am dead and I'm just a ghost now. Can anybody see me? Like going through all these weird thoughts in my head and coming to terms with it eventually because I started going back to work the next, it was the weekend and I went back to work on Monday <laughs> and I wasn't concentrating at work and that's when I really thought I shouldn't be here working with these kids yet because... I thought it would distract me and, you know, take my mind off things, but it just was too big to not be still thinking about it all the time. Um, and it was, yeah, probably about a month or six weeks after it happened, and then I had this dream vision thing, and um, instantly I was just back. I knew where I was. It was this white energy white consciousness white not even like a cloud or like a light but just it felt like a space but it w didn't have walls but it felt like light but it wasn't shining it's just there it's hard it's hard to, it's difficult to explain but whilst i'm in this space i felt like i was just in a transition like I'm going if I was in an airport I'm just looking for my gate my departure gate or oh, gate 52 down here so I'm going down the tunnel to go to my gate um, and I heard a voice over my right shoulder and it was like hey welcome back how was you how was it and then I heard another voice saying yeah, it was all right. And then the other, the I call it the big voice and the little voice because one felt like a parent or somebody who was waiting at the airport, like, welcome back from your trip. And the other 
person was the little guy. <laughs> um, so it was one of these voices you? At the time, I didn't think it was. I thought it was, oh, somebody, I'm just, somebody else is coming back as well. And yeah. they, it's their family. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. But now, I think both voices were me. Huh. Now that I've had time to sit on it, <clears throat> just different parts of me. And so the big voice is saying, what do you mean, me? It was okay. Like, every time you go on a trip somewhere, you learn something new, you bring a souvenir bag, you know, it's, it's, you've seen something a little bit different. And the little voice was like, nah, pretty much the same every time I go back. I know what to expect. And the big voice was like, but what about the balance and the little voice said, what are you talking about, balance? He was like, you know, you can't have a north if there's no south. You can't have light if there's no dark. Mm. You can't have male, female, up, down, left, right. All this balance stuff was coming through. Mm. Like dualities. Yeah. And it was like, but they're all part of the same thing and everything's just perfectly hung in balance. The stars, the planets, everything's just there. And then the little voice was like, oh, I wasn't even looking at that. I didn't, didn't notice that that even existed. And the big voice says, well, you got to go back. <laughs> um, got to go back again and check it out properly next time. So have you? I've been so much more aware of life since then. The first year or so was still a bit fuzzy. But since then, like around that time as well, I was just starting to listen to philosophers like Alan Watts and um, Aldous Huxley and Timothy Leary. And I was just getting into the 60s philosophy and the peace, love, happiness movements and... Mm -hmm. Um, so when I'm, this experience just kind of accelerated that and it was just like, now I'm in, in the, in the outback in Spain having a ayahuasca ceremony <laughs> or now I'm smoking DMT or now I'm doing this or doing that, like traveling further and further and getting more philosophy and more plants and more just doing, just living life and being inquisitive and questioning everything questioning myself and questioning the society that is our biggest influence i used to just be a part of it and now i'm aware that i'm a part of it yep mm. i'm just curious going back to what you were talking about the physical part of your death new death experience or death experience um how long were you out for well, I tried to ask my friend who was with me and she was traumatized by the whole thing. So she okay. wasn't really checking the time, but it was quite early in the party when it happened. And on the ambulance report, when they actually resuscitated me, I think it was like one thirty or two in the morning or around that time. So it'd been a little while, but I'm not really accurate on how long I was actually away for. For her to call the ambulance and then the fire brigade came and then the ambulance came and yeah they the ambulance was there for at least a couple of minutes as well whilst they had to i guess try so from the time they are they, they only log from the time they're on the scene till the time i'm awake so it shows a couple of minutes on the record but i'm not sure it felt like felt like ten minutes to me, but it could have been more or it could have been less. I'm not sure. Yep. And at any point, did you feel scared at all? Did you feel any fear? No. As I said, when I was, it might be different for different people in in, in this circumstance. If you're going to get shot in the face and you've got some scary dude in front of you, you're probably going to be scared. Yep. But if you're going to pass away in, in the sleep or something, as I did, I suppose it was an overdose, 
that killed me. But it, in my sense, I just felt like I was falling asleep. And then I, I never got up from that sleep. But there was never any fear of, oh, my God, I'm dying here. I'm, it, this is not regular sleep. This is death. Mm. Was, there was no distinction between the two. It was just I'm falling asleep. And then even the the conscious state felt like a dream. But it's like... That's where we probably go every time we're dreaming and we're scared of it, but we're going there every night. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it feels like the same place. Yeah. Um, in one part of it, like I said, I didn't have a body or anything. I was just traveling through this white, spacey consciousness, but I could still... I had consciousness of a conversation. Mm. Um, but in the next part of the experience it it felt like i did have a body in the next part um after i reached my gate it, it's like a a movie scene it just clicks to the next thing and i'm driving down a country road and it's a clear clear starry night um and i think i see a shooting star it's, but I'm not sure. I always second guess myself and I'm like, nah, uh, might have been an aeroplane or it could have been maybe my eyes are tripping. And I drive a bit further and then there's another one. And I'm like, that was definitely a shooting star. I know that. And then I start driving and I'm like really happy that I've seen a shooting star. I'm feeling blessed and lucky. And then there's one more. And I'm like, whoa that's freaking me out now like mm. seeing three shooting stars that's it's not fun anymore it's scary <laughs> <laughs> and i think at that point in the experience i did start feeling a bit scared because it felt unnatural um and then shortly after that all the stars from the sky just all started falling from the sky and well. i i pulled over and i was like holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. I was really scared. But I wanted to know where they were falling to, so I was trying to peer over and see what was going on over there, where they're falling. Um, and then all of a sudden, three of them just came into my face. And vroom, vroom. There was one there, one there, and one there. And they were just kind of glowing and just like hovering around me. And at that point, I was thinking, where am I going to run? Where am I going to run? I'm like, run away, as if I can run away. Like, they just came from all the way over there to here in a second. I'm not even going to get a chance to get in my car. Like, they're around me. They've got me. They've got me. And I was like, I thought, okay, you've got me. You've got me. I surrender. And when I surrendered, that's when they, it kind of like felt like they cradled me. I, I felt back and I was supported. And they just held me like a baby. Mm. And it was... Like, I got the wrong impression. They weren't trying to get me. Yeah. They were just trying to love me. Mm. Um, and they were just hovering around me. Um, and I was floating in the air at this point. And like you would imagine a star or something and just little bits of it were just falling, like raining out, just sparkling out from it softly. And they were just like falling onto me, just little speckles on my face and on my shoulders and necks and just like loving me hmm. and they were playing this really beautiful music as well um just angelic soft really emotively just beautiful music and i was thinking maybe this is what music looks like but we just don't see it you know hmm. we, we hear it but we don't see it and i was yeah. like oh this is amazing um and they were getting closer and, and brighter and the little bits were falling into me until it was just all surrounding me I was just filled in that white ball again and that's when I started thinking about my family and yeah just wishing that they could be here I was like this is so nice if I'm just laughing and giggling like a little baby and feeling loved and feeling held and supported and I just couldn't wait to share that with everybody and that's when I woke up out of it I was like oh what the hell was that yeah right. I was like I know what that was and I started writing it down I was like I never want to lose this 
dream or this vision.